entered kindergarten in the Wallinson Avenue Public School, and I met up with Miss French. And Miss French told me and my classmates that the three most important words that you will need for the rest of your life are please and thank you and I'm sorry. <laughs> Years later, I realized that Miss French was a very wise lady. Shuva, Tzvila, Utstaka, Mahavirin, Esroa, Hagazera. We say on Rosh Hashanah, and really they are the watchwords for an entire lifetime. Shuva, <coughs> saying I am sorry. Tzvila, please, pleading to the Rabboni Shalom, each and every one of us, and Staka, expressing gratitude and saying thank you, are really the three most important pillars of our lives. Clearly, a rabbi, after 30 years, finds it necessary, if he is intellectually honest with himself, to say, I'm sorry. There are times that things fall between the cracks. <laughs> Families are missed. Something happens. A family is disappointed. An entire shul is disappointed. So it is necessary, inevitably, to say, I am sorry. But tonight, perhaps more than the other two lessons of Miss French, is a night of saying thank you. And it's very hard and probably impossible to complete the task. I want to begin by thanking someone who the founding families will remember with great love and admiration. And for the rest of us, he remains a legend in Jewish history, JT. JT. Yosef Rebbe of Rotenbaum, a true dreamer and builder of Claudius Rebbe. It is a historical inaccuracy to say that the Bayit started in my basement with 12 founding families. Really, the Bayit started with just me and JT, or shall I say, JT and me. He was perhaps more difficult than all of the 800 Mishpachis of Balkhata grew into. A very demanding individual because he was a dreamer. And I remember just to share one or two insights about Joe. Our dear friend Avram Frotander, the president of Chaim Belin Yeshiva, and a great benefactor of Torah, much like Joe is, great benefactor of the Oriosa Cola. Called up one day to Joe and he said, you know Joe, you've supported Torah all your life, it's time for you to learn Torah yourself. So he sent out by UPS a shots. And I spoke to Joe and I said, we're going to study Torah. In those days I had plenty of time. So we made up that on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, Joe was going to come to my house and we were going to learn tomorrow. Joe was on school. He had a few years of failure in Europe. He came here at a very young age. He began working with his father and his brother and built the vast empire that the Tenenbaum family built. He said, okay, I'm gonna come at three o'clock. So I prepared, I went out, and I bought a chalkboard, chalk, and the shots came. And I made charts, and we started to learn brothers, the first mission in brothers. And he sat there, he came at three o'clock, and from 3 to 4, and at 4 o'clock, I was exhausted. Then the next week, he came at 10 after 3. <laughs> Started again, working hard with him. Still working on that first mission. The third week, 3.10, 3.20, 3, 3.40, he showed up around 4 o'clock. He said to me, Rabbi, 
Learning is for you. <laughs> Just let me build a shul. <laughs> I built the shul and did. The Jewish community of Skor Dilwish today is blossoming in so many ways. The Federation is building a major institution here, a communal institution. But it was really the Orthodox community that had the vision with Joe to build in this city of Vaughan. And there were two organizations that started at the same time. There was Chabad, our good friends and neighbors, Chabad and ourselves, the Bayit. And I noticed one day, and I spoke to Rabbi Shudd, sat in the bedroom together, that I noticed that the south side of uh, Chabad Gate is, is um, odd numbers. And yet it says 770 on your building. He said, no, he said, we called the city and we got it. You know, they didn't, I didn't, I had nothing to do, Rabbi Grossman did it. 770 Chabad Gate. <laughs> I called up the city. <laughs> He said, we want to have 613 Clark Avenue. Well, Rabbi, you want 613? We got 613. <laughs> That's how we got our address. <laughs>